Hey y'all, I'm Jules. Welcome back to another episode of Spirit Sherpa, the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. With me, as always, is Kelly Sparta. Hey Kelly, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Jules? I am faking the enthusiasm today. <laughs> I know, no, I know. I'm I am. <laughs> I'm trying. It's not feeling so, well. Yeah, well, I've, I've been sick for the past week. Um, it is uh, springtime here in Louisiana, which means my black truck is covered with green and yellow pollen, and um, it's all up my nose. And so this is a time of year I just normally get, a, you know, bronchitis and sinus infection and all kind of good stuff. So, yay! Yay, happy so joy! I'll, 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 Yes, yeah, so I'll sound a little snuffle up, I guess, a little bit. Yeah, I'm thinking you and the neti pot need to be friends. So. <laughs> oh, yes, we, we have become best friends. <laughs> yes, yes, we have. Those things are wonderful. Yes, yes. disgusting, but, but, wonderful. but very good. Yes, they, they, uh, yeah. they're like, very necessary. Me out. Every time I do it, I'm like, you know, it's like. Oh, that no, yeah, totally me. grosses me out. Yeah. 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 So exactly. how, how's, how's Panama? Uh, it's, it's, so we're, we're right in the middle of summer. And so it is warmer, but also drier. So it's, it, it's actually, it, I was kidding with my husband. We've, we've definitely gotten acclimatized because when I lived in Boston and it was summertime, I could not sleep unless it was 73 degrees or lower. And here we have the AC set to 25 degrees Celsius, which is like upper 70s. And we're like, totally comfortable. It's all good. You know, <laughs> it's just like, okay, that's, that's, yeah, we've definitely acclimatized. So uh, it's, it's beautiful. It's dry. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be happy to see the rainy season come back around because it's not as green as it has been. Uh, the rest of the year because of the rain we haven't seen rain in a month so yeah it's, oh wow it's, uh, yeah so but we are getting the bahareke which is the sort of strands of rain that get blown in from somewhere else that create all the beautiful rainbows so if you're following me on facebook you've probably seen a bunch of my of my rainbow pictures because i've, I've seen, seen those rainbows those are rainbows. really aren't they stunning yeah yeah those are really pretty yeah, some of the brightest rainbows I've ever seen in my life. They're amazing. So, yeah, so we're doing that. And, and I I went viral on TikTok uh, last week with a uh, video that I did from a friend's back porch because it was so beautiful. I It's got like 37,000 views. <laughs> I was just like, holy cow, right? And so uh, I did cross post Sweet. that to... Yeah, I think I cross posted it to Facebook. I'm not sure, but it's definitely on TikTok, and um, and so that's that's been fun. And I've gained a lot of Panamanian followers who are now saying, "Hey, you know, when are you coming here? And when are you coming here? I'll show you around. Come around." And so we're actually going to drive to uh, close to Panama City in mid March, and so we'll get a chance to say hi to some of the people that have been following us along the way. That'll be fun. So, and I've got an invitation. Oh, to that come is going to be a fun. Farm. Yeah, I've got an invitation to go to a farm up in the mountains uh, where they have horses and chickens and, you know, they they do agro-tourism. And so uh, we're oh, totally going to do that. that so, good. yeah, so it's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm loving Panama. Yeah. That, that, is, that is nothing to, you know, yeah, that is really cool. I like that. Well, we yeah, have an you know. awesome guest today. We do. I'm excited. Yes. I, I literally, you know, like I get a lot of people who ask to be on the show. I mean, like a lot of people, like one out of every like 15 or 20 actually gets on the show. Um, and the moment this one came through, I was like, get her on the show. <laughs> because she's talking about a subject that I know so many people are going to be excited about, which is soulmates, right? You know, we, we talked about soul right. families and we talked about soulmates a little bit way back at the beginning of the podcast. I mean, like first year of the podcast. Right. And um, but we haven't ever really dug deep into the soulmate concept. And Kathleen is a medium, which is how she ended up on this discussion. Right. And so I'm going to I'm going to let Kathleen tell you a little bit more about herself. And so welcome to the show, Kathleen. Thanks for coming. 
Oh, thank you so much. It's, a, it's so nice of you to have me on. I appreciate it. Um, so, you know, I was, I'm, I'm an attorney. I was practicing law. I'm going to go back, you know, maybe 10 years ago. And um, I had some things go on in my life, some losses. Um, I lost one of my sisters. I, I'm, a, I'm from a family of girls. And uh, that was probably the first thing that sort of set me on my path to um, having a real strong curiosity toward the afterlife and communication between these two realms. Mm -hmm. And uh, my husband and I um, really went on sort of a mission together to learn more about uh, mediumship. And um, we found out um, there's a um, church that's called the Spiritualist Church. And um, yep, that's where I usually send people to learn mediumship. Oh, yeah. oh, that's so cool. <laughs> you know, most people don't know when I bring it up on a podcast. I'm so glad you do. Um, so, yeah, that really opened things up for us. Uh, we were there one night and, uh, well, we were invited to come for a, a table tipping, and um, that which is a form of physical mediumship. Do you know what that is, Jules? I see your face. Yeah, you I, just, I, just, I, just, I just found out about that. I'm like, wait, what? Okay, this is cool. I just yeah. found out about table tipping. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's cool. Uh, so why don't you tell our audience because they may not know. Okay. So what happens is this was at this, you know, small church and there were maybe, you know, 30 people in the room or something. And um, we broke off into little groups and you, you use a small um, round pedestals table, which has just one leg in the middle. And um, everybody, you know, sits around, you put your hands very lightly on the table and you are setting forth the intention to communicate with someone in spirit. And you, you know, there's some meditation involved to try to, you know, line up your energies. Um, and we were singing, we were doing all kinds of fun stuff and, and we had no idea, you know, my husband and I were kind of like, what is happening? And then the table starts to shake. It vibrates. You can kind of feel this weird movement and then it starts to shake and vibrate. And, you know, we had connected with someone and then it starts to rock and move and um, it really takes on you know some um, energy and it for lack of a better way of saying this it walked over to me and landed on my lap which was really mind-blowing um, and I'm going to tell you that that was probably the moment that um, you know changed changed my perception of life um, and we walked out of there and we got out to the car and, and we were just like, what? St looking at each other, like, can you believe this just happened? Um, but actually, it, 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 it even went beyond that because the table can, if you ask it to spell out words for you, it can do that. So, you know, like one tap is a A and then two is a B and it will, it will spell out a message. And, you know, it spelled out the name of uh, um, a very dear friend of mine who had passed and was part of... Um, you know, I was going through some really, um, some pretty deep grief over his passing. And I had had this very strong feeling that he was around me and he was in my home and it never had that happen before. And then he, his name comes out, you know, gets tapped out. And um, I knew there was something going on. I knew that this was something that I needed to have a better understanding of. And so we started uh, meditating um, myself more than my husband, although he's always been my kind of my partner in crime, you know, he, um, he, whenever I communicate now, it, like it took quite a while to get to the point where I could, you know, hear spirit, but I learned mm -hmm. to do that. And it's, you know, it's called clear audience and you can, you know, you start to hear um, words or phrases. And um, I, I also developed you know, some um, clairvoyant ability. For me, I see spirit lights and I can see auras. Um, I, I don't pick up on um, people's, you know, spirits. Like I can't look at someone and say, oh, you know, your, so, your aunt so-and-so is here. I never had that ability. I will occasionally see somebody standing behind you, but I only see their outline. I get to see mm. light. So I don't know if it's a guide or if it's a, um, a family or a friend, you know, but... Anyway, so this started happening, this whole process, and um, eventually, and it, this, this is over a course of, you know, years. It took a long time to develop, but I um, began channeling spirit, and um, I was able to 
really my spirit friends, like we call them our spirit friends now because they stay very close and they communicate with us quite a bit. It was really them more than us. And they mm -hmm. um, helped these, you know, these messages to come through me and I, they would come right out of my mouth and my husband would write it down. And so there were eventually books and books and books of, of messages from people in spirit. And um, I was able to connect with my sister who I'd lost and with my mom who I lost when I was still in my 20s. And my husband's dad died when he was a little boy and he was able to connect to him. And I mean, just amazing, amazing experiences. I, even talking about it makes the, like, the hair raise on my arms just telling you because it's like, it just, it just changed everything. It changed, you know, my idea of life, you know. And at the time I was um, practicing law. Um, I'm an mm -hmm. attorney and I was doing this just you know, sort of for fun or, or our own, you know, education, our spiritual education. And the things that we were learning made me want to write about it. And I, I have, you know, always written and I had um, self-published another book um, when I was, when, during the time I was practicing law, it took me forever to get the book done and be practicing law at the same time. But I, you know, I, I had an understanding of how to write a novel and, uh, that's what I decided to do with this information. So we were asking our spirit friends, like, well, you know, I really don't want to write a nonfiction book about these things. I just, I like stories. And, and so they were very supportive of that and said, we're not here asking you to do anything for us. We're just offering you this information. And if you want to share it, you can. And uh, we really wanted to. And so some of the things that we learned had to do with um, the fact that we have been here before. And this is not our first, you know, trip here on the earth plane and um, that we existed before we got here in this lifetime. So there was a lot of delving into, you know, how does that work? And and, you know, for a while it was like, who were we and what, what was happening? And and we got some um, glimpses of those things. Um, and I wanted to write about that. And I. Um, I have certain people that I've known in my life that have stayed very close to me. They're in spirit and they stay very close and they're staying with me throughout my lifetime until I pass over. Mm -hmm. I, that kind of loyalty is something that's, you know, it's, it's just, um, I, I want to share that. I just wanted that to come out in a story so people have an understanding of how really deep these relationships are that we're all having, you know, and in that this love that we have between us, it doesn't disappear. It's not gonna go. When you pass out of the earth plane or one of your parents or your, you know, your friends or your siblings, when they pass, that love is still there. And um, you can feel it, you know, and I, you've probably had these experiences yourselves of, of having lost someone and then having the sense that they're close to you and that, you know, they, they love you and you can, it's a tangible thing that you can feel their love for you. And, um, I just think that's that's the kind of message that I wanted to get across. Awesome. So when we're talking about soul families and soul mates, right? Let, let's we've talked a little bit about soul families in the past. Mm -hmm. Let's let's focus on soul fan, soul mates right now. Um, you know, there's a lot of people out there. There's, oh my God, so many books on how to find your soulmate, blah, 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 right? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my God, yes. And so, you know, if you were to give someone advice on how to find their soulmate, because that's what they're going to want to know if we talk about soulmates, right? Um, do you have any advice on that for them? Or do you want to define soulmates first? Why don't we start with that? Let's define what a soulmate is first. Okay. So my understanding from everything I've learned from all this is that we have lots of soulmate relationships and it doesn't have to be a, you know, do or die. I'm going to meet this person and that's going to be my forever person. It doesn't have to be that. And even when it is, even when there is a really special connection, that doesn't mean that life is going to go smoothly. So, right. you know, it doesn't, it doesn't align. <laughs> Look up twin flames, people. Look up twin flames. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, so I wrote this book. I used the idea of a romantic soulmate because I thought it was the best way to really talk about this. But, um, you know, right now I'm working on a sequel. And in, and in that book, 
it's, it's the same people reincarnated into another life, but I focus more on there's, there are two brothers and on what their relationship, and they're soulmates. And that is just as deep and just as important. So our, our right. soul relationships are, are not narrowly defined. Um, and, you know, they are romantic and they are not romantic. It, 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 it varies. And I would say, um, you know, we attract through our thoughts, we attract through our feelings, through our vibration that we're putting out is what we're bringing back into us. And I, I don't know if there's, I don't think I could write a book on how to, how to find your soulmate. I, I don't think I could do it, you know, because I, I think it's, so I think I think it's less about how to find them and more about how to recognize them. Yes. Right. So like um, Kathy is my soulmate. She is a, one of my soulmates. My husband is a, one of my soulmates. Right. Um, there are and, and then there are people who are in your soul family, too. Right. Yes. And so from a from a soulmate perspective, I think it's more of a you know, this is a connection that I'm going to have for my whole life. Right. And, you know, Kathy and I are not romantically involved, nor have we ever been, nor will we ever be, you know, we're just, we're, we're friends and we work together and, you know, we, we share a brain is what we say, but, uh, you know, we're, we're soulmates because we are, we are in this lifetime doing things together for, our purpose, right? You know, to, to yeah. do that. Um, you know, my husband came into my life a lot later than Kathy did. I've known Kathy for over 20 years and, uh, you know, I just met Jeff 10, like nine years ago. Right. So, you know, we don't always meet our partner soulmates, right. Our, our romantic soulmates right away. Um, but I will say that I think that my first husband was a soul connection that was an agreement that we were going to make to to be together because yeah. i needed to learn those lessons right yes yeah i understand that and, and so you know yeah it varies yeah. and 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 some of these are um agreements before we come so you know there, mm -hmm. there are other souls that we're that we're with in the spirit realm and um we're able to collaborate on how our life what are the things that we want to do in this life what's going to happen and that this we shift up roles too so that yeah. someone who's your mom in one life could be your child or your sister or something in another life and it, it, it enables you to know them and love them deeper and yes. you know which is i think what is um the goal of all of this is you know the simple answer to all of this is love i mean lo love is at the center of the universe that's that's to me that's what god is you know, and I think my, um, you know, my goals in this life are to act more out of love and to get closer to love and to just recognize it in whatever is around me. That's what I look for. That's my spirituality. So if I'm yeah. looking, you know, wherever I am, I try to see it that way. And I, I'm a very flawed human, so I, I don't get it right. Who isn't? You know, but I'm trying. That's <laughs> Yeah, that's my, that's, aren't we all? Yeah, you know, but that's, so I don't want to give you the impression that I think that because I, I, I don't, but I, I, that's what I think is the truth. And I think if you meet someone, you asked me, how do you know? And I think the best answer for that is by the way you feel. It's a gut mm -hmm. because, you know, your soul is speaking to you through your gut. And yeah. that's, intuition is not, it's, it's not a random thing. It's really tapping in. So the more we're able to um, silence the noise, which is hard, yeah. it's a really hard thing. Um, I think the, you know, the world we're, we're living in right now, particularly it's so loud, you know, it's hard to, to just be alone and to be, listen to your own soul, but your soul is talking to you, you know, all right. the time. And um, I'm gonna step out here on a ledge and I'll offer another thought um, that I don't always go into, but I think it's fitting. So one of the things that we've learned is that even when we're here, there is a, like the, the soul is made of many different pieces, so to speak. So there's, um, you know, every lifetime is a part of that soul and the life we've lived in the spirit world is part of that soul. And at the, at the center of it is the real you, but there's mm -hmm. a piece of that that stays in the spirit realm. 
so that even as your soul incarnates and you're here, there is a piece of you that's still there. And that right, the is, higher self. And right? that's the yeah. higher self. And that is all that is feeding you information. So it's, you know, that's that's the um, I think that's the the goal of meditation um, is the idea of of just letting that happen. Yeah, I, I agree. And then I would I would add one more thing to the mix of of how do you know? Um, and often it comes with the sense of I I know you I we've never met, but I feel like I've known you forever. Right. That energy is often present when you meet a soulmate or a member of your soul family. It's that you feel so familiar. I, I, I feel like I know you. Do, have we met? Right. Yes. And Charlemagne and I talk about that all the time because, you know, she and I have we cannot tell you when we met. But we the moment I went to one of her events, I was like the moment I saw it, I was like, oh, I love her. I have to go to this. Ah. And then I arrived and I introduced myself and she's like, oh, you're Kelly. I love you. And, I, and neither one of us have any memory of having ever met before. Uh, right. But, but we, we had that connection at that level that says, oh yeah, we've been together a long time. Right. <laughs> and, and it's, it's like that. Right. So, uh, you know, these things are the way that, that, that we can identify and recognize when these people show up. Now you're telling this, this is not a nonfiction book. This is a fiction book, right? That's correct. Yeah. So it's sort of like the Celestine prophecy where you're learning through a story, right? Yes. I, you it's know, very shamanic. Wow. Oh, that's, a, that's a nice note. I thank you for that. Um, I love stories. I always have, you know, and I mm -hmm. find that it's a, it's a, a good way to learn. You know, mm -hmm. I just think it's, it's more attainable when you're reading a yeah. story and you're, and you're considering the concepts that are holding the story up, you know? Yeah. And so, so there's two concepts, um, in my, in my book and before we were born is, um, it's reincarnation, you know, and soulmates traveling together, but it's also spirit communication because that experience that, um, that I had, that my husband and I had together and continue to have, because we still communicate with spirit is just something that has defined our lives in such a way that I want people to know. Like this is, this is a, a solid thing that actually happens, you know, and um, because it really helps with grief, you know, yeah. it helps tremendously with grief. Mm -hmm. And um, particularly because the people that we talk to, they're always so happy, you know, they're joyful, they're, they're good, they're at peace, they're, they're, they're still loving life. It's just, right. they've stepped out of the stream, but they're still here and still, you know, they're alive, they're just not in a physical body. And, right. um, you know, I think that's so important. Um, but also what we found out is that we had less fear of, of everything really, but of death is a big one. You know, if you have, yeah. if yeah. you absorb the idea that you're gonna continue, it just feels it's so much more comfortable because you don't have there isn't this big stop sign at the end when am i going to hit it you know you're not right you're not really yeah. you're going to keep going so. well and you know it's very interesting because um my friend chelly campbell uh she wrote the uh, the wealthy spirit and um you know i can hear the people out there going but how can you know if it's true or maybe you're delusional or whatever and i'm like you know what it, it, she said it best. She said, you know, you, we cannot definitively at this point in time know whether or not our beliefs around reincarnation or, you know, existence past death can be true. But the question is, does it make you miserable to think that they might not be, that it might not be? And if it does, then why don't you just believe if you can't, if you don't, if there's no way to know, why not pick the thing that makes you happier? Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you and I, we, we do mediumship. We know <laughs> that there is stuff on the other side. We know. But right. if you personally don't know, then, you know, pick the thing that makes you happiest rather than picking the thing that makes you miserable. Right. I and that's, yeah, I mean, that's a good way to live in general, isn't it? Right. You know, absolutely. That makes you yeah. joyful. You know, right. I think exactly. That's a, I think that's a great way to approach it. 
Um, yeah, I, years ago I worked for a medium as a, as his you know assistant receptionist you know twenty some years ago, and um, and I will say that that he gave a lot of people a lot of comfort. You know, um, I am a medium. I don't do mediumship as my primary uh, thing. I don't actually even sell mediumship services. Um, and it was because I didn't want to be, I didn't want to spend my time talking only to people who were grieving. And that was a conscious choice on my part. And this is something that you guys should hear actually, because just because you have a gift doesn't mean you have to use it. Right. <laughs> um, and it's not to say that I don't use it. I just don't use it for this. Right. Um, and, you know, you probably have a different experience of it than I do. Um, I actually don't sell services either. I don't do readings. For oh, people. okay. I, I, to me, it's a sacred thing. And I don't, I'm not criticizing anybody who does otherwise because we all have our own relationship, you know, with our, our higher self. And we have, to, we have to honor that, you know. But for me, it's always been, ah, this gift was just bestowed upon me for whatever reason, you know, and I want to share it. And that's what I do. And I share it through my stories and I share it. If someone close to me, you know, um, needs help, I'll do a reading, um, you know, and my family, my little, my, you know, I have, like I said, was, I'm one of five girls. So when one of us passed over, it was, it was tough, you know, yeah. and um, we connect and we talk to my, my, our sister comes through and talks to us through my body. And um, her her daughter has, you know, she's my goddaughter, and um, I'll do that for her. And her mom will come through and speak to her. And, right. uh, you know, things like that, close to me, but I, I've, I've never taken money for anything like that. Yeah, and that's that's how I do it these days as well, is, is you know, if it shows up when I'm talking to somebody, great. And, you know, otherwise, not so much, yes. right? Um, you know, I do it you know, if, if it's needed, but it's not one of my services for that reason. Um, so, yeah, I mean, so I, when I think back on the books that I love the most in the spiritual world, um, now that I think about it, they're almost all stories. They're almost all like, you know, the, the, uh, the way of the peaceful warrior and journey to Ixlan and uh, the sea priestess and, you know, all of these stories that you learn about things through them, right? Um, and, you know, so I, I, it, I've always wanted to be able to write a novel. I, it's just not in my cards to do so. Uh, I'm much better at the nonfiction stuff. <laughs> so all my stuff is nonfiction. I'm very good at that. It's the engineer brain, you know. Right. Um, but uh, the ones that I love, Illusions, my favorite book of all time by Richard Bach. Um, and uh, that's a story within a story, actually, you know, well, it's a book within a book, not a story within a story, but, it, but I will yeah. now. Yeah. Oh my God. It's the best. It's the best. I love it. So, um, but yeah, these, these are the ways that we learn best. It's very shamanic in nature is to, to learn through storytelling, right? That's, that's a, a very shamanic way of teaching. And so, um, you know, if, if people are interested in getting this book, which sounds very interesting. Um, it's called Before We Were Born, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And where would they find that? The easiest thing would be to get it off of Amazon. Okay. It is at some bookstores, but um, I don't know which ones in every individual state. I know it's at um, Barnes and Noble and, and um, you know, in some states, but you know, the easiest thing is just go to Amazon. Okay. And then if they want to learn more about you and maybe see any other books that you've written, where would they find you? Um, so my, my website is just um, my name, which is Kathleen with the K. Uh, my middle name is Ready, which is R-E-A-D-Y. And then my last name, Diane, D-A-Y-A-N.com. Okay. So and you can email and, me there if you want or, you know. Okay, great. Yeah. So, um well, this has been fun. I, it's been great learning about your journey and learning about your book, and I can't wait to read it. <laughs> oh. um, and uh, so, you know, if you guys are interested in learning more about Soulmates and understanding it at a deeper level and getting a great story in the process, check out the book Before We Were Born. And, uh, and 
let's see. Uh, Kellyism for the day. A Kellyism for the day. A soulmate oh Kellyism. Soulmate <laughs> Kellyism. If you feel like you've known them forever, you probably have. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And that means forever in both directions, right? Right. I was going right. to say, wait, yes, yes. Yeah. Forward, yeah. backwards, diagonal. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. So, um, and Diane, we're going to, uh, sorry, Kathleen, um, we're going to invite you onto the Spirit Sherpa podcast Facebook group so that uh, people who are coming in and have questions to ask that they could ask you about them in the group if they want to do that. And so, guys, if you have not joined the Spirit Sherpa podcast Facebook group, by all means, do so. Everyone who's been on the show is in there. And so it's an easy way to connect with all the people that you've heard on the air with us and ask deeper questions and learn more about what they're doing. And so, you know, some, some of them will post what they're doing next and things like that. So join that. And as always, if you'd like to be a guest on the show, if you'd like to like come in and ask questions of our guests as they're here live while we're recording, we record on Tuesdays. Uh, depending on the Tuesday, we may do one or two episodes, and we record at 3 and 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and so if you'd like to do that, you got to join the mailing list because every week we send out an email that says, here's the link to go, come in and ask questions live on the air uh, as we're making the recordings. Um, and uh, that way you can get in and do that. We would love to hear from you. We would love to get some listener questions. And I'm sure the guests would love to talk to you, too. So uh, with that, I think that's everything we've got for today. I believe you're right. Um, Kathleen, thank you so much for coming on board with us. It has been great having you here. Thank um, you so much. Absolutely. And we will include all of your information in the show notes. Um, and that is all that we have time for this week, folks. So tune in next time when Kelly adds another chapter into your guide, into in, into your guide, because it's just going to be one of those weeks because I'm <laughs> half sick doing this. As another chapter into your guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. <laughs> I'm Jules, y'all, um, here with Kelly Sparta and Kathleen Diane. And you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, y'all. Bye. Bye-bye.